Raiders lost 27 to 10, a very, very poor showing from the Raiders on a week three. Primetime got absolutely drubbed. It was probably the worst points I've seen from the Raiders, uh, you know, in at least a couple of seasons. I mean, you have to go back to like 2015 to, to see a, a game as comprehensively bad as this. So, before we get into the meat of the matter, of course, you got to talk about all the stuff going on with the NFL with the protests. Look, here's the thing. If you want me to get political, I will get political. But the reason I'm a fan of football, the reason I'm a fan of sports in general, is because that has long been the only form of mass pop cultural entertainment that has not been infected by this absolutely annoying and painful left versus right culture war phenomenon. Everywhere you go, the movies, the news, video games now, comic books today for sure, cartoons even, commercials, everywhere you go in the mass media, bombarding you with political propaganda, trying to get you to see things their way and to get all excited and antsy over social issues. I don't want that. I'm sick of that. I don't care. I don't want anybody left or right telling me what to think. That's why I like football, because it's a meritocracy. You don't have politics, you don't have all these social cultural issues going on, you just play a damn game for 60 minutes. So what we're seeing here is, and I'm going to attribute this as a reason why the Raiders lost, is we're seeing everyone trying to politicize the game. We're trying to make it about something that it's not. Because what this is, it's about a bunch of guys out there wearing helmets, trying to avoid concussions and make a lot of money. That's the point of football. It's not about racial issues. It's not about wealth inequity. It's not about police brutality. And over the weekend, it's especially vain because it's not really about any social issues. It's just about people being upset about what the president said. So basically, the entire thing was a symbolic F you to Donald Trump. And uh, you know what? I don't care. You know, if you want to do that, do it on your own time. That's not what you're getting paid for. The NFL is not a federal agency. And uh, I'm not even going to get into the whole merits of, you know, protesting the national anthem, what it stands for, what it doesn't. Whatever. But the fact of the matter is, I'm not paying money. I'm not tuning in to watch you air your political grievances. All right, if you want to do that, start a YouTube channel or go on Instagram. No one's paying money to watch, uh, you know, Kirk Cousins or Khalil Mack discuss the intricacies of, I don't know, universal basic income or disparities in prison sentencing for black youth. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody cares. All right, if you want to go do that, Go make a crappy documentary about it or write something on BuzzFeed. But that's not pro football. Pro football is you run, you pass, and you beat the hell out of people. If you're not going to do that, I don't want to watch. So all that to say, I will put money on it. The reason the Raiders lost this game was because they spent too much time trying to figure out what they're going to do during the national anthem that they forgot to prepare for an actual football game. The Redskins were ready. They were out there. They had the advantage. They were clicking on all cylinders. The Raiders, I don't know what happened, but something was up. I've had time to think about this one. I've watched some footage earlier, and I'm going to go in full conspiracy mode, but hear me out. I think the Raiders sabotaged Derek Carr. Going back, something is not right, because you can't tell me that you have an O-line that was this good in the last two games, absolutely collapse and give up four sacks to the Redskins defense, which is not even close to being an elite defense, that you saw the cornerbacks give up stupid sacks, that you saw guys with no hustle, nobody doing anything. Do you think that was intentional? Was it just one week aberration that they just, you know, wanted to suck all of a sudden? Go watch the footage. Derek Carr, literally the only player on the Raiders roster who stood up for the national anthem. He's sitting there praying. Everybody else is locking arms, scratching each other's armpits, thinking about, I don't know, WEB, whatever. I don't care. Whatever you want to do, do that. But I, watching that game over and over again, I think it's happened. I think uh, the defense and the offensive line and some of the receivers got a little pissy about what he did, and they threw the game. Now, I know that's controversial. I don't have the tangible proof to back it up, but just watching that game, this was not the Raiders that I know. 
This is not last year's Raiders. This is clearly a team that did not give a damn what they were doing on the field. They had no interest. They didn't want to get a win. They were just there to get their paycheck and leave. And if you're going to do that to me, I am going to cash out now. I'm not going to waste my time three, four hours a week watching a bunch of pansies sitting there crying about political issues, not trying to actually win games and make an honest paycheck. If you want to do that, I'll watch the WNBA. Or I'll watch soccer, for God's sake. I can do that anytime I want. That's not pro football. That's not Raiders football. And if you don't like it, I don't know. Go do something else with your life. You have options. All right, so what do we need to know? Derek Carr, 19 for 31 for 118 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. He got sacked four times. The best O-line in professional football mysteriously collapses in this one game showing. Compared to Kirk Cousins with 25 for 30 for 365 yards, averaging 12.2 yards per pass. Three touchdowns, only got sacked once. So, uh, yeah, one of these guys was a candidate for rookie of the 2016 season. And the other was Derek Carr. So, yeah, not, not a good performance from, from Derek Carr. But I think, once again, you know, he's not throwing the ball to himself. He's not protecting himself on the passes. He's got to have the guys in front of him, and they weren't there. Rushing differential, absolutely just astounding. Washington, uh, they had that Perrine kid from Oklahoma at 49 yards, which is more than the entire Raiders uh Offense, 96 yards, passing 13 yards, running the ball. That's all they can muster. That is absurd. This is just like, you kind of figure if you'd go out there and just play like on accident, not really even like caring whether you win or lose, you'd at least get like 150. But to have it that low, come on, guys. That's something's up. And uh, really could stop Chris Thompson last night as a receiver or a runner. He was uh, leading all receptions 150. So he's just burning up the field. Vernon Davis got a couple of good in there. Um, but looking at rushing again, um, I mean, you're just seeing these weird situations where there are a couple of times during that game where the Raiders, they were put back at a uh, first and goal, and they're about four yards away from the end zone. They didn't hand the ball off to Rashard Lynch once. He wasn't even in the backfield. They weren't even trying to set up the run. That would have been an easy seven on the board. I have no idea what sort of scheme they're trying to run there, but it definitely didn't work. So offensively, as far as the rushing game, he got nothing. Uh, Jared Cook did pretty well. I was impressed by Cordell Patterson with what he did. He was pretty decent. Uh, but everybody else, eh, not a lot to say. Amari Cooper only had one reception for six yards, uh, had five targets, and kept bobbling balls like he's Mr. Bucket. I, this guy, we have to like put super glue in his gloves or something like they do in uh, the replacements, but... He's a fantastic talent if he can just hold on to the damn thing, but what can you do? All right, so what else we got? Um, probably for me, the go to the game was James Cowser. You know, the guy who went out there and recovered two fumbles on special teams. That's very, very impressive. Uh, Got to give him the, that a boy. Probably the most valuable player for the Raiders and a very, very underwhelming effort. Uh, looking at the defensive stuff here, Khalil Mack going to be Khalil Mack. Hitting the quarterback three times. Yeah, he got it. Yeah, he got a sack in there. I thought he had a sack. Of course, he had a sack. So he yeah, had the defense did better than the offense. Even they go up 27 points. A lot of those were late in the game, though. Um, B, yeah, I have nothing else to say. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible loss from a team which looked very, very disinterested to be on the field, who got down early and really didn't something they want to get back up. I mean, it's one of those things where you can't, you know, give it a quantitative measurement, but you can just look at it and say, there's no hustle. This is not a team with a killer instinct. This is the 2014 Raiders, not the 2016 Raiders, not the Raiders we saw that were just dominant in the first two games of the season. It's clear. Either this team's, like, entire run last year was a complete fluke, which I doubt it was because they're so talented, or they just had a really, really bad night. I'm going to vouch and say they had a pretty bad night, but here's the thing. Why did they have a bad night? Well, go ahead. That's what happens when politics enters football, and you have this divisiveness entering sports. You have teammates not being teammates. You just have them being jerks to one another, and you lose games. And uh, if you're okay with that, then uh, I'm not going to watch football. It's just stupid. Why? I can watch wrestling if you're going to do that. I can watch something fake like, I don't know, 
MSNBC. I can do that anytime I want. But this, not for not for me. Not in my favorite Sunday ritual. Can't can't have it. All right, so we got Denver coming up next week. I don't even know what the line is for that, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All we need to know is the Raiders got embarrassed on a national public forum. They didn't care, and I think they would rather go out there and virtue signal rather than win games. And uh, if that's going to be the case, hell, I'm not sure I want to be a Raiders fan anymore. Mm-hmm.